Making a life worth living and retirement worth having is something that I literally talk about regularly. Marketing and minutes are something that I talk about sometimes with regard to how to handle programming and complaints and other things in terms of producing a life worth living and retirement worth having in our business practices. Magic and Mayhem are audio cast files talking about the realities of life. Lately, you've probably noticed that I'm talking a lot about police, and I'd like to tell you exactly why. You see, in my life, I had a lot of things get stolen from my home. I literally was trying to get help from local law enforcement, and they simply made me into a joke. The reason they made me into a joke is that they don't really take theft all that seriously because, in their mindset, it's hard to catch. Openly, it seemed pretty obvious to me who was taking my possessions was one of two categories of people. But capturing them was really difficult. I literally spent thousands of dollars, at least a thousand dollars, on trail cameras to try and catch the thieves doing their thing, as well as a security camera system that was supposed to capture people coming in and out of the home. It actually did not work exactly. I got prophetic wisdom to start sleeping in a different place to try and protect myself and was literally told to put on double pairs of pants to try and protect myself from per physical harm in these situations. Unfortunately, it didn't work. You see, what happened was I literally woke up one morning and found that my legs had been shaved. For a man, to have his legs shaved without his permission is really a violent sort of act. Literally, someone, what that really meant was that I was asleep while they shaved me. Now, I am not a super sound sleeper. I sleep soundly when I sleep, but I don't sleep so soundly that I wouldn't notice someone doing something to me, literally. The reality is that we live in a world of chemistry, where people can literally open your locked door, go into your home, open your beverage containers that you produce that are bulk, and literally put something in it to cause you to sleep. Melatonin is something my mother uses regularly to help herself sleep, and I think that's odd, but maybe she's missing my father being next to her, lying next to her in bed. I know for a long time after my life partner left, it was sort of hard to fall asleep. I literally had to put pillows where she had been in the past because I usually was bumping up to her in the middle of the night, and it was sort of comforting to have that little body next to you. But openly, I'm telling you the truth about my life. The reason that I've been sort of been hard on police of late is because of the exorbitant amount of police that I've literally seen on my path for the past many years. It started about three years ago, and it literally hasn't stopped, and I really have a journal of all the data, of all that information. I literally could name every single plate as much that I can that literally has passed by me, crossed my path, or shown up in what seems like really oddly timed circumstances in multiple states within the Midwest. You see, literally when a person in the sheriff's office marks you as something, it changes your life entirely. When someone violates your rights this way and your freedom of movement underneath federal law, it's really hard to prove it. In my life, I was literally getting tired of the constant theft. The local police were treating me like a joke because of comments my family had made on my mental health status and literally for the harassment and hazing they'd been doing to me. When I tried to get a police officer to listen, he was just trying to set me up for something else. The lies that police tell make me ill. And openly, that's what we're talking about, the way that people lie when we try and do things that are right for us. When a person is right and another person is wrong, what happens? They literally have a discord. And in that discord, they have an opportune moment to say, listen, I made a mistake, or you've made a mistake, and we need to really talk this out. We need to do what I would call loving this out. We would need to really talk about why is this the way that this is. When people drive around and look at their cell phones, they put a little risk on the roads for everyone else. For the children on bicycles, for the children walking across the street, for other cars on the road, they literally don't get the risk. But in my life, I was being hammered all the time. I was literally seeing police everywhere I was going, and it seemed uncannily odd. I also noticed that there was someone going in and out of my locked door all the time. Every little possession that I put down, and I mean literally everything that I put down, seemed to be moved around, manhandled, fondled, touched by someone else. And unfortunately, we don't have fingerprint labs on every corner. We can't literally take something into a lab and say, here's the item that looks like it's been touched by someone else. Please produce a fingerprint off this item so that we know who's been in the house. Literally, I was not calling the maintenance people of my apartment complex to come in my home, and I've told them many times, do not enter my home when I am not here. It is my little right to tell them that. 
Whether or not they honor that right is really about the integrity of those men. I'm not going to go into that point, but my reality is that I literally went to a federal building to find some help. What ended up happening was I accidentally ended up tapping that federal agent's car with my car. And instead of the man getting out and saying, looks like everything's okay, is there something you were needing because you seemed awfully close to my vehicle? Instead, that that professional person, who I didn't know the name of, and I didn't know what kind of a person he was, could have been a secretary for all I know, pulled a gun on me. Literally pulled a gun on me, told me to back off, told me to do all sorts of things. He called security. The security came out, put me in handcuffs, literally tore every stitch of clothing and my items in my pockets off my personage, threw them all on the ground, almost breaking a camera that was a gift from my late father, and openly then shoved me into a set a a situation where there was tons of IPD officers. There was a bunch of extra security guards like they had nothing else to do at the federal building. Everybody looking over me, all male. During that process of being held by the security guard in handcuffs and literally wrenching my arms through the whole process, which is sort of unnecessary because I wasn't trying to do anything illegal, I was interviewed by a couple people supposedly from the federal building. Never did they introduce themselves, never did they give their name, never did they give me a badge or a business card saying who they were literally, and I was asked what I did for a living. I told them that I was a Japanese language instructor, I told to teach reading, writing, speaking, listening, and the characters of Japanese language. I also mentioned that I was working with my mom on a, the selling of a cellular health product. That literally got into the record by supposedly some IPD officer who supposedly wrote that file. Now, what did he write that file off if he was not present during that conversation? Not at all. He literally was not present during that entire conversation. He literally got that information either from watching a videotape on the grounds or from talking to the federal people who came out to talk to me and to mark me unwell. They apparently and allegedly called one of my family members, as it, so it seems, and I was literally taken off to Eskenazi Hospital against my will, shoved into a room on a floor for a psychiatric ward, forced to go through a screening with a therapist who had no mental health rights in my life whatsoever. She told me that I was delusional. I got shoved back into a little room, locked by handcuffed by a black officer to a bed, and every time I needed to go to the bathroom, I would get locked with less chain than when I would wake up from being asleep. I found I had less chain between my bed post where I was locked and my hand, making it incredibly difficult for me to kneel on the bed practically and to urinate into a cup that they wanted to check for urinalysis. The little nurse who was on duty named Ashley, who was probably late 20s, literally asked me some very inappropriate comfort comments on my life. She asked me whether or not I had a penis or a vagina, and she wanted to literally know so that when they put me in jail, they could have the appropriate officer interrogate me and literally pat me down. What ended up literally happening was that a female officer was assigned to get have me get buck naked literally in front of her, and in that process, she told me to bend over and she told me to cough. Now, I don't know about you, but as a man, I was offended that I had to do that. As a lawful man, underneath federal law, local law, Illinois state law, Indiana state law, and any other law that recognizes federal law making me a man, I found it beyond offensive that I had to be strip searched in front of a female officer. But more importantly, it was beyond offensive that that officer literally thought she'd play a game like it was a doctor's office, telling me to bend over and then literally telling me to cough. Now, is that really police procedure? I don't literally think so. I was then assigned uh, to be there for a few days, and I literally slept on a cold floor of an individualized cell because I did not want to be put in general population for my own health risk and my own physical risk, but also for the little risk of being associated with people who were doing things illegal. I did not want that association at all. They put me into a cell for a mental health patient as opposed to giving me a cell that had kind of a window with some breathing room. It was very difficult, and I literally slept on a cold floor of a cell where there was no seat, there was no bench or bed, and there was no blanket to sleep with. There was a toilet and a urinal, and they fed us food. Literally, it was the same food every single time, a sandwich and some cookies, and even though I had said I was allergic to chocolate, they still seemed to give me chocolate cookies and some apple juice with God knows what in it. I slept the entire time I was there, practically. I did sing a short while, some songs that I knew that were Christian, just to literally help pass the time in my absolute boredom of listening to the derelicts in the cells next door solicit women in other cells nearby. 
I found it beyond offensive that officers would walk by and I would try and catch their attention to literally say, what's going on with my situation? And they would openly ignore me completely. They would parade people past looking through and lurching through the window of that cell. Finally, a nurse came and talked with me and a, a supposed caseworker, but they were asking me all sorts of inappropriate questions with regard to my medical health that were literally not their business. If I could remember that nurse's name, I would literally sue her for the questions that she was asking me about my life of 20, 30 years earlier with regard to my health care. She literally put an illness into my hand without my permission, saying it was a requirement of the law of being in jail. I was not allowed to refuse that, and that illness has sort of destroyed my hands a little bit. Thankfully, there's a Lord God that is protecting me from some of the situation, and those hand marks are healing. But since I wasn't in jail very long, I never had anyone follow up on what she put into my hands. And thankfully, it is healing. But this is my story, and this is why I'm talking about police and their barbarism. I left jail. I went on with my life. I continued my research of the various horse farms and other places I'm trying to go to produce a life worth living and a retirement worth having and create new relationships in my life after losses and my father gone and death and other sorts of aspects of my life. But no one in that situation told me anything about the rules of what I could and couldn't do. I ended up in a courtroom, a public courtroom, where literally the judge proceeded almost like if it was a comedy situation. He literally had on shorts underneath his uh, um, robes and literally sat there and said, you're all not guilty until proven otherwise. And he pretty much took our names down, took my business name down into the file. So now that is a part of my legal name, which it wasn't before, and openly practically ruined my legal name, my professional name, for getting any type of employment. The federal building officer lied about what I said to him, what I did, and it created for me a misdemeanor. Thankfully, not a felony. They gave me two counts of something, which it didn't seem appropriate to the situation, and I literally said I was looking for help and wanting to network with someone, and that's how the accident occurred. But they didn't take that into account. They literally said, well, he admitted he hit him, so therefore it was intentional. It wasn't intentional. I was trying to knock on the officer's window to ask who it was, if they could introduce me to someone so I could ask some questions about how to handle the hazing going on in my life that local police were totally ignoring. Since that time, I've literally been marked with something or my car has been marked, and that's an observation of fact, nothing more, other than the fact that literally every time I cross a path or go through a particular town, I'm crossed by the path of a sheriff, a police officer, or some sort of apeshit security guard. Now, I can say that because factually I've documented it all. It's a little uncanny. But practically, that is the story of my life, that right now I'm facing a jail sentence simply because the person that that first judge assigned for me didn't actually show up in my courtroom. My family members decided to involve themselves in my opportunity to have a failed trial, and they got him to require a mental health check. I found that incredibly offensive, and I told him so in a voice message. When I got to that court, he didn't actually show up, but his name is literally still on my paperwork. Some supervisor, who was a total asshole, came in and told me that he had an ethical imperative to have me checked by sanit by, for my sanity by some mental health psychiatrist, some forensic scientist. I literally said, no, you won't. I want this to be thrown out. This is my first offense ever in life. I want a deferral program if we can't get it thrown out. And he literally said no to it all. I told him I didn't trust him. I was trying to figure out how to fire him, literally. And just as I was trying to figure out how to fire him and find out what was really going on from the prosecutor's standpoint, he literally marched into that jail. I got called up front. The judge didn't look at me one second at all. And that lawyer proceeded on my behalf without really my permission. The court recorder didn't literally look at me at all, mouthed something to my attorney, and I couldn't tell what was going on because I was not told what the procedures were of the court. It all happened very quickly, and now I'm facing possible jail time or other aspects, and I've got to have these mental health checks because my siblings have been trying to mark me mentally ill so that they will gather more inheritance when my mother's passing, which I'm certainly not looking forward to. Now, this is the little truth of what's happened to me, that my vehicle that I purchased for my business has literally been destroyed by someone. My family paid five grand for it to be completely overhauled to work for the next three to four years, and that man won't stand behind his work. And literally, my mother doesn't seem to care about the investment, which is really sad, but openly, I have to have a life worth living and a retirement worth having, and I'm looking for opportunities in life. This is why I talk about police. This is why I make you aware of the fact that they can destroy your property. 
that they have technology now that allows them to shoot an electromagnetic ray at your vehicle, which causes the battery to die immediately. And openly, that is a destruction of your federally protected property in your automobile, is it not? There are other methods that they can do that, that they can do with the manufacturer to turn your car off. It's called a kill switch. Most of us don't realize that there's a kill switch put on our vehicles. The, apparently, the manufacturers do this to protect themselves from people who do not pay for their vehicles on time in terms of having credit and paying those credit accounts. Don't you find this incredibly offensive? I literally think it deserves a class action lawsuit, and I've been looking for a lawyer to help me to handle some of the issues that have been was caused as a result of the manufacturing of a vehicle that has continued to fail. In my lifetime, I've got one person literally helping to me to look for a lawyer, but I want you to know this. I literally have called every single law firm in the Indianapolis phone book looking for a lawyer to help protect my rights to my own body, to my own mind, and to get out of this situation. And everyone takes in information literally, and no one produces help. I've got one firm that might take $1,500 of my money if I had it to produce for me a lawyer that would try to change the situation a little bit. But there's no way to prove that I'll get out of the situation. And frankly, I think it's an FBI marketing nightmare. That that man had such fear in himself because I was trying to follow him to just ask a simple question. My mistake to think that he'd be open? Absolutely. My total mistake that I accidentally bumped into his car caused absolutely no damage to his vehicle whatsoever. But he literally pulled a gun on me when all he had to do was step out of the car and go, Gosh, it seems like you're needing something. What can I do to help you? Now, wouldn't that have been a better way to market the FBI in the Indianapolis community? Wouldn't that have been literally the better way to handle a situation with someone as opposed to pulling a gun and turning a person's life into total fiasco and mental health and all the other little shit that they put on my little legal name? But if I say that, then I'll likely get hit by them because they have the power in this world, don't they? They can destroy a life or give life in a matter of seconds. That man has worked to destroy my life. He put people in my life that I would have never chosen to be in my life ever before. I've had my rights taken away from me completely in terms of my human rights of being able to choose my own physicians and choose my own care and to choose literally how I wanted that trial handled. It was not handled the way that I wanted it to and openly no one told me how to figure out the procedures of the court enough to know how to get the judge and the person assigned to defend me to recuse themselves. That judge didn't look me in the eye one second. The woman judge who was supposed to be present was not there, and I got assigned to some other dipshit in place. Now, I can say it like that because that's how it feels to me. It feels set up, it feels sabotage, and it feels like a religious right movement is trying to take away my little rights to be myself, and my family has to work really hard to damage my reputation. Now, this is literally what has happened to me. Why am I sharing the story? So that you'll understand why the mayhem stories are a lot more mayhem than magic right now. So that you'll understand that I'm literally looking for a law firm that will represent my rights. My right to be free of this situation. My right to say you have made a marketing nightmare for your organization. And this is a total joke based on tons of lies that people told. There's supposedly a female witness. I saw no girl on the scene whatsoever. Who did they get as a female witness? I never saw any female on the scene. I saw a lot of men in security guards' outfits. I saw a handful of IPD officers. And literally, it became a, a, a weekend warrior sort of situation, in my opinion. That literally, they had all these guys out there for one little fella like me. I'm only five foot four, which is literally pretty damn short. I weigh less than 200 pounds. Literally, one officer can handle me no problem, especially the large black man who was a security guard that was wrenching my arms in, a, in handcuffs, forcing me to do that. They could have just sat there and talked to me. But instead, they produced for me legalities on my life, destroying my legal right to employment, practically, violating my rights in terms of my medical health care, betraying my rights with regard to my own physician's network. And Eskenazi has a lying son of a bitch of a nurse who lied to me about what she was doing to me. And openly, I've been physically modified in some way, and if I literally suggest that, then I must be mentally ill. You see, I can produce all kinds of lies in the world, but the absolute truth is what I've just told you. That practically I'm facing a jail sentence because some man decided he pulled a gun on me without giving me one benefit of the doubt, without saying he is innocent until proven guilty. They decided the guilt. 
I sure as hell wasn't trying to do anything other than get a networking name or how to go about talking to someone. The procedure. I couldn't see any guard tower, welcome wagon, welcome center for anybody a little late in the day on a possibly a Friday or Thursday night. But my family violated my rights in those moments. I have a sister who's destroyed my little name. And I have a brother who did the same in another state. They are no longer my family. But practically, if I tell you that truth, you think I'm a monster. No, I'm like anyone else who's being hazed, harassed, and lied to and betrayed. I'm saying I'm sorry. You've harmed my life. I don't have any need for people in my life who are trying to literally harm my rights to be employed in this world. So this is the truth as it stands. This is Blake Ensign of Blaze Communications LLC looking for a lawyer who can help me with multiple facets of a lawsuit based on a humble budget of next to nothing. Class action must be where we get our money because that's the only way I'll be able to afford an attorney. And my little $50 attorney provided a total discredit to my life and my name. He chose his ethics over my rights, which is a total violation of my federal right to have a fair proceedings in that situation. That is the absolute truth. Now, I'm telling you this story so you won't give me any crap for the things I put into my system of LinkedIn or any other social media channel talking about police and how they violate our federal rights, how they violate our human rights, and how their procedures might just need to be literally overhauled. But I'm a training person. I literally would have handled this so differently than they did. Because every moment of time for an organization is a marketing moment. And people in general need to remember that. No matter what your profession, no matter what your career life, no matter what you serve, no matter what you sell, no matter what you're part of that overall process of creating a sale of a program, a product, or a person, that literally it's always marketing moments. Once again, this has been Blake Henson of Blaze Communications LLC telling you the little truth about my life. And if you know a lawyer who can help me, who won't charge me a million dollars, which I don't have, I'd really appreciate the help. Thanks for listening.